Hi everyone. My name is Christina and I am an integration specialist here at Red Team. Today we're going to be going over the basic overview of what the Red Team Flex integration to 300 looks like and how it works. Today we have Ashley assisting, so if you have any questions, please put them at the bottom of your uh, screen. There's a Q&A and we'll get to your questions. Red Team is able to integrate with Sage 300, and one of the first aspects to understand about the integration is that Sage 300 is not designed directly to integrate. So with that in mind, we utilize a third-party service of HH2 and their services that facilitate that integration connection. One of the important things to understand with this integration is that anything that is taking place between Red Team Flex and Sage 300 is that it is communicating through the third party of HH2. Transactions to Sage from Red Team as well as Sage moving from Sage into Red Team flow through this HH2 connection. All transactions are fundamentally one-way transactions with Red Team sending transactions through to Sage, but Red Team has no way of knowing once it gets to Sage if there's been any adjustment made after the fact, such as an edit or a deletion. So Red Team's not going to know, and it's something to keep in mind as you integrate so that there could be some cleanup on one side or the other in Red Team or Sage, or possibly both sides. But once you have this software synced and installed on your search Sage server and connected to Red Team, we can then begin the preliminary configuration. Now our configuration team is going to help you with this integration process and components, getting everything set up within Red Team, making sure it's set up and moves properly through HH2 to your Sage 300. And a big part of that is your cost codes and vendor codes. And we are going to match them up one for one with the same ID that's between Sage and um, Sorry, I lost my connection there. Um, I'm back. So one of those things that's a big part of going, that's going to happen is the cost codes and the vendor cost codes. We're going to match them up one-to-one -one with the same code between Sage and Red Team because the integration, it, it requires it to work that way. And because of the nature of that, Sage is going to have to be the system of record for the cost of sales, cost of the cost codes. So inside this port import tool, once we click in under cost codes, you will see that the cost codes are going to be initially set up. But after the effect that the major cost codes are brought in, you may have one that you need to enter. And you can click here if that cost code is inside your Sage. And then you will see that it's possibly in red team and it will find it. You will find that and then you will import. But say it doesn't exist in red team and it's only in Sage, then you're going to click, click on the, this one here that I have as a test and you're going to associate it with a division and then import. It will then create it within red team and your cost code will be linked so that any transaction that you utilize this trans this uh, cost code inside Red Team will push directly to the Sage through the HH2, as well as if you're entering a direct cost within Sage, it will move through that HH2 to Red Team. Now, the other piece of that is the vendors. And again, our configuration team will allow you to, will uh, we'll set it up properly in the beginning. But if you have additional vendors, this is where you would go to put them in. And it works in a similar way. Now there's a little more flexibility with the vendors as well. And we'll touch on that in just a moment. 
one of the things about the vendors is that they can be pulled in from Sage into Red Team this in, within the same process of the import. But once you have them in the original large import, we then can click here on a, one that you're entering after the fact, and you can then select and match it up here and click import. Now it's got a particular ID and name that can be brought into Red Team, and that's through this import tool. Now, if there's a situation where somebody has created a vendor on both sides in Sage and Red Teams, you can kind of go um, come in here, look it up and match it up and then import. But if it doesn't exist here, then at that point, you can just click it here, click import. And then at that point, it will create it inside Red Team. Now, a lot of our clients will choose to make the red team the, the um, system of record for vendors, whereas the cost codes have to be inside Sage and the system of record for those. And one of the reasons they choose to make red team the vendor uh, where the where you enter your vendors is the fact that we can push vendors into Sage. And that makes a cleaner vendor list within Sage for the purpose that uh, your potential vendors that have uh, bidded on projects but were not awarded those projects do not push over to Sage. Only the ones will push that have a business contract, such as the contract that they were awarded for the project or an invoice that um, is directly entered in. So those would only move into the Sage product. So at that point, you have those import tools here. But again, typically most of this is completed with our configuration team. There are a couple other tools within here, and one is the login to HH2, and that is to the server. Um, and a lot of times, the only times really you're gonna go into this is when you have a situation where you do not see the transaction within Sage. And so you would log into here and see what the message might be that it got hung up. And typically one of our agents, our red team, service agents will be assisting you. And so that is what that button is for. Now, additionally, we have a summary here of how many projects have moved over, how many vendors, invoices have been linked and so forth. Um, and then we also have this transaction log. Now, one of the things I wanna mention is that we have a transaction tool within Red Team that is has a few more items that can be sorted um, in different ways. And you don't have to leave the Red Team software to move into the configuration area. But if you were to utilize this, oops, I just clicked out. We will um, hit click the filter and you will see the most recent transactions here. And you can choose by status, service, sources, and, and by date. But if you click the funnel, you will actually see additional transactions most of the time. But um, we are on our database, so there's just a couple. So this that, that kind of finishes um, the integration configuration process in this configuration area. So we will move on into the the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, and move into Red to Team. Red Team, And transactions are not instantaneous within the integration as it happens with the processing of the projects as you go along. Basically, you choose which projects you are linking up and initiate that process. Once we are move, click on the projects within Red Team, you come to your main dashboard uh, overview of the projects. And on the right-hand side, you will see that there is Sage 300 column that shows this grayish chain link that shows that it has been pushed over to Sage and linked up. 
Now, if I go over here, and these are my favorites, as you can see, but if I go to all open projects, and once this loads, you will see some yellow. And this is what we call a yellow broken link chain. And that means it has not pushed over to Sage. So with that in mind, we can click on this sample project where we can go in and we can look at uh, the project is in draft. And in a scope, we can utilize and see that we can put in a Sage ID project number. And that project number can be formatted within the configuration, which we can circle back to because I did want to show you that. And so um, the project there has an automatically generated seven digit ID. And it just is a placeholder for Sage purposes. And when a project is opened in any status, as long as it's not closed, that project ID will filter in and create. Now, you, as you can see, because of this number, we have this button that says send to HH2 and Sage. And for that reason, you can click on this and it will push it over. It will then provide the date, the time, and who has sent this over. And you can see below there it has the format. Now, you can put either the ID that, are, that already exists in Sage for this project that you want linked up. And if it doesn't exist in Sage, you can add this project ID and it will send over the basic framework information just to have something there for it to push other transactions for that project, such as, you know, invoices and so forth. But the basic framework will be the project ID, the name, and the address. Now, once the project is linked up, based on normal workflows, we know that you have to enter your commitments. And whether those commitments are subcontract or purchase orders, um, once they are executed, and I'm going to go back to my basic project here so that I can show you this. Once it's executed, we are going to go into this one that's already connected. And we're going to go to your invoices, the vendor invoices. So the project is, this project is connected and you have, can see that we have pushed some purchase orders, some sales agreements, and based on the approval process, we will be able to move over to the right and see inside the inbox where they have been approved and executed. You can see that some of these are still in the approval process with the project manager and they're just in the commitment status and that the yellow broken chain link exists. The execution of this one shows that it has the gray linked chain link. Now you have the metadata log over here that you can see who created that invoice, when it was committed, when it was executed, and the date it was pushed over to the Sage product. Now with that, once it's sent to Sage, one important thing to know is that Vendor invoices will at some point get paid and the information and detail is brought in via sweep and it's automatically swept in. And you can see this draft payment here that provides the amount and the date it was paid. And it will then relieve your accounts payable aging report within Red Team, as well as some other reports. And one of the other things that is brought in via sweep is the job costs. And job costs are uh, costs and invoices that have been directly entered into SAGE, such as a payroll item or such as uh, uh, employee expenses. And you can come into this budget tab. And at that point, you can look and see these actual 
column that has figures. Now, this is a great tool for your project managers as they can come in here. And once you click on it, you can see on this one, it's employee time. Now it's gonna bring in minimal information as far as just hours and the amount. But if we were to go down to the subcontracts of, let's see, let's do this one here, that 21.9, you can see that these are vendor invoices and you can see what date they've come in and so forth. But you can also see these adjusting entries that have pushed over and come in from a sweep from the Sage product. And so that is a great tool that um, the project managers can utilize to see what's coming in and what's making up their cost code line items and not having to contact the uh, accounting department every single time they're wanting to know if something's been you know, invoiced, paid, so forth, because now they have these tools here. One of the things that I mentioned over in the configuration area is the transactions uh, tab. And where we can click on this is on the left side of the toolbar. And once you click filter, you will see that there's some additional options here that you can you can sort by. And one of the um, items here is the Sage 300. And you when you click, you can see where you can see what's been unsent or unlinked. And it's a great tool just to double check. The other one is if you click on this hamburger, what we call the little hamburger menu items, you can also uh, manage your adjusting entries, which are those that are being pushed from Sage over to Red Team. And once you click on these, you can see here's all my adjusting entries. They've been connected to Sage 300. And that sort of information, you can then data sort some other ways to just get down to the one that you're looking to troubleshoot or if you're wanting just to see when it went over and, and so forth. Now, the other, other item here is this red bubble here. It has um, some learning tools within that as well as you can connect to our customer service chat team that can assist you with helping you find, say, I forgot how to do this or whatever, where to find this menu item. Um, you can do that. There's like lookups here. So there's a lot of tools, but I am going to run back over to the apps cart and to the HH2 configuration area because I want to point out that I did not, when I was here earlier, some of the tools within here, because these cost codes and a lot of this will be um, part of the configuration process. So they'll, our configuration team will help you with the cost codes and tax venues, which typically most of our clients leave in Sage. But I wanted to point out this preference area because I failed to do so earlier. And one of the things is this is where we were talking about the format of the Sage IDs. And you can choose right here, this tool allows you to say, I want this format. This is the format I have set up inside Sage. And then that will present where you saw on the project, this is the format I want. And I'm going to override that seven digit automated project ID number. The other tool we have that you can choose to utilize is the minimum accounting date which prevents older invoices being uh, processed in a, an accounting period that has been closed. So a lot of our clients use this at year end and have it at um, the 1231 has closed. You've now done your taxes, presented your uh, financials to your board. So at this point, we don't want any invoices going into that year. So we put the January 1st, of that year. And then any of those older invoices will come in as a January invoice. So these are tools that the, uh, you can choose to use their preferences. And again, like I said, most of all of this is taken care of by our configuration team. Now, that being said, that's pretty much the end of the uh, webinar. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have any uh, Questions?
Ashley, do we have anything? Uh, nope, don't see anything. Okay. Well, we appreciate you being here. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, let a, the service team know if you're interested. And we hope you've enjoyed the webinar and it's been beneficial. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.